So Rajat, one thing that really, uh, you know, uh, intrigues me, okay, is where do you find the engineers to do this kind of work? <laughs> so, so yeah, uh, Swami, it's really difficult to find uh, people who, uh, you know, one of the, one of the, most important things about giving out a good product to your users is making sure that you don't let them down. Hmm. Unless your engineers understand at a very fundamental level, what are they building and how does it uh, impact the user? There is such a big mismatch <laughs> between expectations and delivery. Absolutely. <laughs> that uh, it is the customers who are at the suffering end of the game. And then there's a lot of bitterness. Yeah. We have always chosen the approach of having the people with the right mindset first than people with the right skill set as the top priority. Mm. I'd rather have an engineer who has the patience and the appreciation for what they are building <laughs> than an engineer who's fantastic at code but who doesn't really want to get involved in the use cases. Yeah, absolutely. And finding people, of course, uh, uh, it's, it's so difficult in today's environment where everybody wants to be on top of the game as quickly as possible, as soon as possible. Finding people who really want to invest in uh, building expertise, really getting to a level where uh, they can, on a personal level, make a difference. Yeah, that's that's, that's such a such a major challenge. So how do you how do you go about uh, therefore uh, recruiting them? How do you go about grooming them? Because they get influenced by the environment, right? Because, you know, my my classmate got this increase. My, uh, you know, uh, batchmate became this. You know, uh, you know my roommate, uh, you know, has, has this uh, promotion. So uh, it requires a very deep conviction with what you are doing. So from whatever I've been listening to you for the last, you know, one hour, I think a lot of conviction comes first. Competence yeah. comes next. And, uh, you know, commitment to do it, come what may, comes with it. And that is a very different uh, build that is needed, right? And how do you get that? Absolutely. Uh, you're very right in pointing out the requirements for the kind of work that we do. Uh, so, you know, uh, like you said, when there is so much of... Uh, peer pressure and so many things happening around people uh, we are not immune to it we suffer from the same problems that anybody else does however we have a big advantage and that advantage is that as an organization we are very careful about what we do and mm. what environment we maintain internally so while there is this one side of things where people are attracted there are there are those very few who are actually looking for a little different space, which gives them that joy, that kick, that purpose, and who may not really be able to find that easily. So we guard our values first. <laughs> we, we, we don't make decisions to drive growth as much as we value our value set. We, we make sure that as an organization, we are always doing the right thing. That's that's not easy. <laughs> we have uh, in the past often resisted temptation to grow fast at the cost of compromising these essential requirements of the team. <laughs> mm. You always have these people who see what you are doing, like it, and then who want to give you a booster to go to the next orbit. But then if you don't feel that their value system aligns with yours, 
there's a tough call to make and we are fortunate that uh, team jagriti doesn't have to think twice <laughs> across the world to on what is the direction ahead of us what this does of course is uh, create that safe space for some people to find their life purpose in a mm. very permanent way mm. so it's very much more difficult to bring in a new team member and get them absorbed many people would leave us in the first year of work or not even join us because of the way they are structured but it is also true that many people would find their life goals and life purposes so beautifully aligned with what they do that work becomes fun and uh, the relationship that you have with your team with your product with your customers that becomes enriching <laughs> so no, no absolutely but uh, how do you balance that with the life ambitions of that person right because you know i am an young graduate i come out you know i get married i need a house uh, so there are certain uh, you know uh, money requirements economic requirements that i have uh, so balancing it starts in my opinion uh, would you agree with me uh, having run an organization like this uh, i presume you have done it now for almost 15 17 years right uh, uh, i think if the purpose is not aligned uh, then what happens is that anything that is monetary or economic always there is a gap and uh, and i think the most important thing is when your purpose aligns then the gap between the rest of the stuff that i need as a Uh, employee or as i need a, as a part of the organization uh, that tends to match and it's that's the most critical uh, aspect of engagement involvement and uh, uh, you know i would say retention what do you say completely agree with you <laughs> i often use this uh, sort of uh, little uh, example of how people want to earn more and then use that money to do more to be happy while there are people who are extremely happy doing what they do in terms of their work so uh all of us need to have a reasonable life that's a duty we owe to ourselves and our family but it is also true that there is uh, no real limit to how much one can earn in terms of monetary compensation alone so when you have your at least a part of your purpose aligned with your organization and when you have a sense of comfort with your colleagues if you are able to find these two things you are in a very very lucky place <laughs> really you are in a very fortunate space <laughs> <laughs> 